Thanks so much for joining us. In light of the Varsity Blues scandal, in which parents were paying for their kids to get into high-level schools, we thought we would bring on Kathleen Thornton, Linta, and TJ Linta to talk about this because you're a former Kansas City Chiefs quarterback. You've yes. lived this, and you yes. lived it because you are his mom. Absolutely. And you're starting to try to help families navigate this system the correct way. So let's talk about when this when this scandal first broke. What were either of you thinking? Well, I mean, you just I, just pay to get your kid in. Yeah, yeah. I was, you know, I was in the front lines of this, going to an Ivy League school, and there's a you couple played for Brown, exactly. So I played for Brown, and Yale was one of the schools that was, you know, in in heat for this situation, and it kind of it, it took me back, and I was like, wow, you know, do I know any people that maybe this has happened to, or or maybe you know, it's it just kind of it makes you apprehensive. So. Um, a lot. It wasn't. It wasn't a great thing for anyone in the entire realm of that of of high collegiate athletes and and regular students even. So, it's it's interesting, and I, I don't think it painted us in a great light already. And um, so I don't think it was it was a great thing. And people draw their own conclusions from this. Sure. And and it was it was really tough for us. But you know I think you have to separate yourself and validate yourself. Because you worked there. your way up as a yeah. kid and you didn't pay a hundred thousand dollars to get into brown yeah, exactly all right, right kathy so when this scandal broke your kids are athletes um what were you thinking well i you know i was i was upset by it because i, w I was upset mostly for the kids because if they didn't know that it was happening here their parents were just making taking action on their behalf and not even letting them know what was happening and and really not almost doubting their kids ability to get into a good school and you know that has an impact on kids especially if they're feeling a little vulnerable about their academic standing or about their athletics and so forth and the, and the fact that they actually made up information about people being on teams was just outrageous to me they all got caught think of how much it happens yes where you're not getting caught all right so your kids come up to the ranks you see that they're going to be athletic they love it how do you navigate them starting in high school to do the things they need to do to get to the school because mm -hmm. um, yeah. there's a lot of pressure on kids oh, there's a lot yeah. of pressure and the parents so how do how do you use it and we'll ask you that too yeah. But yeah. how do you start to navigate your kids getting into the right schools the right way well, I, of course, we have to talk about our ace in the hole, which is my husband, Joe, right? So he's been involved in football an for agent a long time. For the he's an NFL, NFL agent, right? and he's also a high school football coach and coach TJ at Hamden Hall. And so with, with him involved, it really made a big difference for us. But I think, you know, talking to parents about how to do that, that's why we're, we're actually creating a course to, to communicate this from two different perspectives, because there's a lot of misinformation about there, about out there about it and parents are really misinformed or they're uninformed and uh, and in, especially in schools where there aren't people that are advocates for student athletes it becomes a real problem now not everybody's going to go to an ivy league school no. they're going to go to the school that's right for them yeah. and they're going to play baseball or track or whatever they're going to do at, at uh, michigan state or purdue which you yes. and I both went to yes. or smaller schools yeah as an athlete growing up, what what kind of pressures, and, and you did have, you know, your dad and your husband involved here, but, but you worked with a lot of kids and you played yeah. with a lot of kids. How do they navigate the waters? Because only like 2% get a yeah. scholarship, right? That's right. Yeah, so it's a very low number. And, and coming up, you know, freshman and sophomore year, it's, it's daunting and it's very overwhelming a lot of times with a lot of, you know, my peers when I was coming through and even myself. And I had someone like my father who had been in the situation, you know, before with countless players that he's represented and he's been able to, to figure out how they went through the same situation. So I was blessed and I was lucky. So I had a little bit of an easier time. Um, but a lot of my friends didn't have an easier time, and I was tr I was trying to spread the knowledge that I had from my father to just my friends, and I was trying to say, you know, this is what you should be doing. You should be be applying here. You should be taking tests on this certain day if, if you're trying to apply this time to this to this specific school. And and you're right, not everyone is an Ivy League school uh, Ivy League student, so it all you just need to qualify and if you can qualify which is why grades are so important whether you're going to the ivy league or any division three two one wherever you're going grades are super important and that's another thing that i think a lot of kids don't really realize they they hear it all the time and they just take it for granted oh your classes are important they really are important 
And if you can't qualify, none of nothing is going to happen. You're not going to ever get recruited, and you know it's going to be very hard for you to get into any of these schools. So, I mean, it was it was very hard. And academics were always something that was close to, that was close to my heart, and it was something that I and was. And you're lucky because you're a into. smart person. I know. I was I was a nerd, so I was a nerd, so I was lucky in that sense. And but but the athlete who's not a nerd, who who's really uh, talented in whatever the sport is. How do they, you know, that you've got the grades, you've, you've got to play, you've got all this pressure. As a mother of an athlete, how, how do you help the child be the best he can be and go to the school he should be at, wherever that is? Well, uh, part of the equation, of course, is the ability to deal with stress because these student athletes are trying to juggle not only their sports schedules and practices and so forth, but their academic schedule. And as TJ said, you know, school, schooling is very important. So, you know, one of the ways that, that, that mothers and fathers can really be very helpful to their children at this point is to understand that their students are going through a stressful time and to be able to sit down with them and have a conversation about how everyone's on the same page you know sometimes parents get a bad rap because they're you know tiger mothers or whatever and trying to push their children too hard but everybody needs to take a, a step back and take a deep breath and say you know what's our overall objective what's our what's our why you know why are we in this together and what what are we really trying to accomplish and then to be organized about how you go about it and create a team that supports your child it could be tutors it could be uh, the academic advisor it could be someone in the athletic department it could be a, a community coach you know but the more people that can help to support that child as they're going through this process the the better off they'll be and do you they'll... think high schools understand this enough to yeah. help the public school athlete. So, so I, I also had the, the blessing of being able to go to a public school for my freshman year and then go to a private school mm -hmm. after that, my sophomore, through my senior year. So I kind of have both worlds in, in my mind. So I, I can kind of see how both, both situations run and how, how each school handles things differently. Mm -hmm. um, and there are certain benefits, of course, to going to a private school, you know, smaller class sizes, et cetera. Sure. Um, but a lot of kids, that's just not the path that they choose. And it, it, was, it was a tough decision for me to, to transfer to Hamden Hall. And um, even even still, it was tough for me, and I was and I knew what I wanted to do. So a lot of kids, they they, they give in to peer pressure. You know, all your friends are there, so all your friends don't want you to leave. And that was something that I dealt with. You know, I had a lot of friends that were, I went to Brantford, that were at Brantford, and mm -hmm. I still have them today. So if they're if they are your true friends, they're going to still be your friend no matter where you go to school. But the other thing is, kids can't think that oh, it's not cool to get recruited because when you talk about when you talk about recruitment. It's, it's something that can make, take you to the next level. And you, know, you need to realize that it's going to be a lot of work. And it's going to be a lot of stress while you're in high school. And, and all these things are happening in high school. It's, it's a fun time. But you need it to makes realize. my mind spin. There's so much yeah, going on yeah. with, with athletes. So the two of you, which I think is very unique, son and mother, are putting together something called Athlete Ascension. Learn, execute, ascend. Are you going into, is the plan to go into high schools, uh, to, to talk to assemblies, to talk to guidance counselors? I mean, where are you headed with this, Kathy? Well, I think, you know, our vision is really to try to help the parents of freshmen and sophomores in high school who are aspiring or talented student athletes. That's our target audience. So both the parents and the child, and perhaps other family members as well. And, you know, all of those scenarios would be appropriate for us to go. I mean, we, we can, we are planning to go and, and give keynote lectures at athletic associations, schools, community athletic facilities, and so forth. But we're also going to be online as well so that people aren't in this immediate area. Uh, they can also learn from our experience and we can help to guide them to their best process. Because I wouldn't know to where to school. I wouldn't know where to start. Yeah. I mean, yes, you, you see as a freshman or a sophomore your um, your student excelling in their sport and you think, gosh, maybe, maybe. they're gonna get a scholarship, maybe they're not, but they, they love this. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do you, you know how to navigate the waters? So I think I think also, you know, it, it, like you said, freshman, sophomore year, you're like, Oh, this might happen. I think it's immensely better to be prepared than to be unprepared. So you should be, if you're a freshman parent or a sophomore parent or a student, you should just be preparing yourself in, in the case it happens because it very easily could. And if you're unprepared come junior year and you didn't do any recruiting or anything like that, you're so far behind the eight ball with all these other recruits because it's extremely competitive as, as I know very well that it's everyone's competing to get to those spots. 
and there's limited spots. But they're, Very limited. they're there, and there's a lot of money there too with, with the scholarships and things like that, and, and it could be a good investment to, to, to do that and get the scholarship. Are you going to speak to Division One, Division Two, Division Three? I had a daughter who went to a Division Three school and swam, loved it. There wasn't the same kind of pressure, of course, as there was at Division right. One or Two. She loved it. It was perfect for her, and she was a scholar athlete on that level. It's so, wonderful. so what do you? It, it, it's individualized. So individualized. Yes, there's Division One, and you know, quarterback for Brown, <laughs> which you were, and then ascended to the Kansas City Chiefs. But can you speak to all of this? Yeah. So luckily, uh, through the people that I've met, I've I've have a large network of people in all different division levels. And I also went to Wagner for my graduate school um, year this past this past season. So I, I have a, a large network, and and my mom as well has friends mm -hmm. who have kids that are, have gone to all levels. You know, Division One, even NAIA. I mean, we're gonna. She's a Midwesterner. She's great. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, we're gonna focus on the NCAA, all three divisions mm -hmm. for sure. Um, but we do actually have some information on NAI as well, but D Division 3, 2, and 1, so uh, it's all, it's more NCAA-based rather than, oh, we're only going to deal with Division 1, because they're similar but different, so. And, and the course that, you know, that we're, that we're putting together that we'll be launching online in particular, we will bring in other people, like we have, uh, you know, a couple of female athletes that we may pull from. Uh, you know, a couple of coaches, some college scouts, you know, people that are involved in the process to give a different perspective on this path. Because it is a pretty convoluted path, and every path is a little bit different. What's the so. hardest part? Is there a hardest part, or is it the all, hardest part, or is the hardest it all part, hard? The hardest part is just figuring it out and figuring where to start. So I think that's where we can come in is, yeah. and help out, is to give some framework for, oh, am I doing the right thing, or am I not doing the right thing, or should I be doing something else that I'm not doing? And we can you know, attest to from experience. You know, This mm -hmm. is something that you need to be doing, and this is something you don't necessarily need to be doing right now. And we can give you those, those guidelines. So it can, it can give you at least peace of mind. You know? So you're a football family. So you're going to yes. bring in... Um, experts in golf or tennis or or whatever whatever it is that you can help these athletes who are really seeming to have um, an expertise get to the next level yeah I mean I, I think that you know what we've found at least in talking to a lot of athletes and in, in other sports is there's a lot of commonality mm -hmm. and I think that if we you know find the the audience in a particular sport we will definitely reach out and and get that expertise What's the commonality in, in the specific among athletes so the, the, the recruitment that? process is similar and then NCAA has certain guidelines that are standard for a student athlete so there's a certain baseline and then each Ivy League is completely different but for the for the rest of the NCAA there's a certain baseline and there's certain criteria you have to meet and then it's it kind of goes from there but there's definitely a baseline commonality from all the sports because that's the NCAA as a whole so. Give me a for instance, because I didn't play so, sports in college. <laughs> so, so for instance, uh, one of the NCAA commonalities would be a GPA. So you need to have a 2.5 GPA to, to be eligible, and you need to have, a, I believe it's a 2.0 GPA to be recruited in general. So if you have below that as your total weighted GPA, and there's, there's different stipulations, and it's a kind of a case-by-case -case basis, but a general rule is you need to have higher than a C. To, to be recruited to the NCAA for an overall GPA. So that's why school is so important and that's why academics are so important. And any freshman or sophomore that's watching this needs to listen in on that and say, you know, coming from someone like me, I'm your age almost, a little older, but do your schoolwork. Yeah. And you really need to do your grade from freshman year on, you know. You know, a, a lot of kids don't finish and they go into the pros, right? Their college careers. And because the money is there, mm -hmm. They're not hurt. They go there, but if something does happen, they don't have their education. It's a. Can you speak to that at all? Well, yeah. That's there's a perfect example. It actually is a pretty low number. It's like one and a half percent, at least for football. One and a half percent make it to the NFL, which is a low number. So, really. So low you need number. to look at the other ninety-eight and a half percent of even the NCAA athletes, football athletes. What are they going to do after their after their four years? You know, you can't you can't bank on going to the pros. You can't at all. So you need to bank on where where am I going to go? Am I going to go to school for the next four years, or am I going to go to a school that's going to help me for the next forty years? And and you got to think about it like that. And that's why. It, do you think most athletes do though? Do, are they getting know. the <laughs> right kind of encouragement in school to say 
this is really important. You can't just chase the money because it might be there for a cup of coffee and a Danish and right. then not there. That's right. Right? Yeah, well, I think, I think it kind of goes school by school because there are certain schools that are highly motivated. And I know Hamden Hall was drastically different than Brantford in, in a sense of, of person to person. Because mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you're, there, you're there for a reason and, and you're going to pay money to go to the school for a reason to get to mm -hmm. college in that sense. And there's a 100% um, college ad admissions rate from Hamden Hall. I, I know that's that. Um, but it's it, it it varies. It varies from person to person and from school to school as to what, how motivated they really are. And I think the best way to do it is to be prepared. And then if you choose not to, then you don't. But it's better to be prepared. Most athletes coming out of public schools, I would say, uh, by yeah. and large. Yeah, yes. I think it depends by on the large. sport, but yes, yeah. I, by and large. I would say so. And you know, the other thing to keep in mind is, you know, I think that a lot of young people think that they're immortal, and you know, what ha what can happen is they could they could have an injury. So, you know, and injuries can occur at any point in time, you know, during a high school career or during a college career. And so, you know, that academic rigor is going to only serve them in the long run. I mean, there's some sports where they do draw players that come in from very little college experience. But, uh, you know, like basketball, for instance, is one of them. It just comes to mind where there are a lot of young players that go into the league. What so. are early tips that parents can do? when they think they've got a child that is excelling in a sport. Give me some tangibles here as a mom. Mm -hmm. Well, what, you know, one of the things that, that we did with TJ, is we, as I mentioned earlier, is try to, try to assemble a supportive team and to also get on the same page with the people at the, at the high school. Because there are a lot of circumstances in which kids may not have a supportive coach. They might, their, their academic advisor might not really understand the relevance of sports in getting into some of the schools. I mean, at, you know, at elite schools like the Ivy League, I mean, they, they have a lot of sports. I mean, they, Harvard has 42 teams, you know, mm -hmm. Brown has 38 teams, mm -hmm. I think. So, you know, that's really important. And so from my perspective, first of all, I wanted to make sure that TJ was really committed to taking that path. And that's an important one to and start taking. how do you take. know? Well, you have to have some heart-to-hearts. Yeah. You know, you really do you do remember those? Some heart -to -hearts. Yeah, they were, they were definitely <laughs> heartfelt. They were definitely heartfelt. Yeah. Did she ask the right questions? I think so, yeah. And I was, I was, I was in a situation where we, we had a relationship where I could, we could just be real with each other, essentially, uh -huh. and, just, and just tell each other how we're feeling. And this was something that was important to me. Uh -huh. And whether it was ending up at the Ivy League or wherever it was, I was going to try to ascend to the best school mm -hmm. that I possibly could. Uh -huh. And Brown ended up being, um, being it for me. And it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a decision that I made fairly early on, mm -hmm. um, yeah. was to try to go to the Ivy League because of how important academics were to me. Um, at Where the were you recruited? Uh, I was recruited uh, a lot of schools. Virginia was one, Rice. So some of the academic Division One A schools for football, and then a bunch of the Ivy Leagues. Yale and, and Brown ended up being the the last. You're day. not the normal person. No, no. The, I'm the not. normal kid is is <laughs> right. not is not you, and so no. you were very fortunate. The normal athlete getting out, um, they're probably looking at, at state schools. I yeah. Mean, and, yeah. And so, but that's still that's still navigating. It's all navigating. Yeah. Exactly. And so uh, no matter where you end up going, whether it's the Ivy League or a state school or anywhere, you know, community college even, you need to qualify. Mm -hmm. So if you don't qualify, it, none of it matters. It's all for naught. So you need to be able to ha be at a certain benchmark. And there's a lot of commonality as, as, far, as, as far as being in a better position to get admit admitted to that school, wherever it is. So the better the grades you are and the better athlete you are and the better recruited you are, the better the chance you have of getting into those spots. So let's that's how let's say you're in a public high school mm -hmm. and the coach doesn't get your kid at all. Right. But in your gut, you know, your child is excelling. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Well, I think in, in that circumstance, you really need to look outside the school and that you, the particular school environment. You know, get them involved in you know with football, Pop Warner football, or you know. AAU football or, or you know some other outside area where even even a skills camp or something where the kids can get exposed to other people who might be coaches or trainers or people that could vouch for your child and say yes I think that 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 he or she really has it and you know it some of it costs money and some of it might not and they could also be involved in volunteer work with, with organizations that support athletics. All that counts, right? All of it counts. I was, yeah, I was going to add to that that one yeah. thing, they, that uh, speaking to a student athlete who's in high school, is no one's going to care about it as much as you do or your parents do. So, you know, you and your parents 
uh, are, are your team. You know, that's who you need to, to, to look within to find the situation that you want to get to. And you need to use yourself. You know, you're, you, sh you should be your biggest motivator. So you should be able to, you know, look to myself and say, what do I really want? And do I really want this? And if the answer is yes, then no one is going to fight for it as hard as you do. Mm -hmm. So you're the, your best advocator. Mm -hmm. What's so, so what about social media? So social media is a whole another is a whole oh, other thing that's happening. <laughs> Just as I started getting recruited, so I, I graduated high school in 2014, and just as I was, you know, just in that year, it started to become a thing, you know, Twitter and Instagram. Instagram's almost outweighing Twitter at this point, but um, they're both super important tools. They can ruin your life that or create That can ruin it. or create, and I think a lot of kids nowadays, you're hearing less about them ruining their lives and more about them helping themselves because... A lot of recruiting, especially on the lower levels, is done through Twitter. And even at the higher levels, you see... So the coaches are, are looking... Yeah, so that happens a lot, where you can send a DM to a coach, or a coach will DM you after... A direct message. Direct yes. message yeah. for all of you, <laughs> yes. Um, they'll send you a direct message, and uh, that's how it happens. That's how the ball can get rolling. So they're easily. recruiting on social media? Mm -hmm. Huge, yes. huge. YouTube I don't know why I'm too. shocked by this YouTube at all. Videos YouTube's too, a huge thing. Right? You just need you need to use media, all of media, to your advantage. So you need to have all your videos on YouTube. You need to have all your videos on your social media with links. And you need to you need to be persistent. Like these coaches, they get a lot of DMs and they get and they will DM a lot of people as well. So you need to be persistent. Say, coach, did you check out my tape? Coach, did you look at my highlights? And did you're you talking to them on social media. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You're not picking up the phone. No. You're no. just you're just yeah, talking. Yeah, there's 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 various rules that I won't get into now about how coaches can contact Contact you, but social media is, is is a way. So that you would recommend at at this date, you know, July yeah. 2019, to use Instagram, Twitter. Yeah. What else? Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, a little bit. Um, right now, Twitter is actually the biggest uh, is the biggest mode for coaches and players to to communicate. So do coaches have a team? Like if I'm if I'm talking, I want to go to Arizona State. I just Each individual coach will have their own individual uh, Twitter account, especially at Division One, Two, and at most Division Three schools will have. Because I know a lot of the coaches that I have co that coached me at Brown that have dispersed have, have are at various spots, and they all have huge Twitter accounts. How do you find them? You, you could just search them. Yeah, you just search their name. Usually, maybe coach whatever. It is. And coach you send Smith. them a YouTube video of me running mm -hmm. track. Yeah, well, you could, right. you could send them a video. You can have it on your profile and say, hey, coach, you know, I'm going to this camp on July, blah, 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 whatever day it is at this school. I'm, I, I hope to see you there. Here's a link to my highlight tape. Check it out before I go. So there's a lot of that that, you know, if the coach doesn't know that you're going to one of these recruiting camps, and th those camps are great, by the way, but if they don't know that you're going to those recruiting camps, it's basically like you're not going. Because there's hundreds of kids that go to the, at least for yeah. football, for the football accounts, for football camps, there's hundreds of kids that go. And if they don't know that you're there, there's, you're just another number. So you need to have that relationship before you step on that field and for it to be worth your while. So that's one more thing to think about. Yeah. Yes. So that's you're one insider tip that we right. uh, so have. And, I, and yes. I love that, right? Yeah. You're, not, you're not printing out uh, some kind of a resume yes. and no. snail mailing it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not anymore. I sound like I'm 150. Yeah. What's something not to do as a parent when you're trying? There must be a lot of not to do's. I think there are a lot of not to do's and I think that coaches in particular are not super fans of highly aggressive parents. So to allow, I, and this is something that my husband and TJ's coach emphasized with his kids at Ham, emphasizes with his kids at Hampton Hall. If you're going to be late, for instance, if you're going to be late to practice, I want to hear from you and not your parents. Right, so they like to see that the that the that the student is owning the process, and the parents are not involved at a young age. At a young age, they they want to see that that student can actually take responsibility and yeah. and have a, a conversation, whether it's on social media or however. Um, in a very mature way, and that counts for a lot. And TJ, what is also a not to do? Well, I was going to say that's a life lesson that that everyone <laughs> should take, at a young no age, matter what. At a you young know, age. yeah. So in high school, when you know you think you know everything, and oh, I don't have to tell them that I'm going. Tell your coach that you're not going, if for whatever reason it is. But be a man or a woman and tell them that you're what you're doing. Um, 
But as far as another thing not to do for a parent or a, a for student? you as an athlete. So as an athlete, obviously all the all the standard ones, you know, don't be an idiot on social media because mm -hmm. you're sending you're sending these coaches messages. They can look at everything. Oh yeah, that, they're looking at yeah. your history. So keep that thing clean. Keep your Facebook, Instagram, your story, whatever it is, keep that clean. You know, so that's the number one thing I would say. And then I think I think just you know be persistent. I think persistence is a big thing to do, and don't expect that the coach is going to come to you and don't expect that the coach is going to find you out of thousands of other recruits to send a message or say hey come to our camp or and they might do that they there's a there's a chance that they might do that especially if you're a higher level recruit they'll definitely do that um, but definitely be persistent and be in the DMs. It it happens there. So so be slide it. in the DMs. Slide in the DMs. It goes <laughs> down so in the DMs. Happy. It does. Yeah. yeah. Um, question for you. So you've been released from the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm -hmm. What's next? Do you know you're going to play it by year? Yeah. So I'm actually going through rehab right now. Um, How you doing? I hurt my ankle. Pretty pretty good. I'm yeah. I I'm you know. I'm How'd you hurt it? Playing for Wagner? Uh, no, I was playing. I was I, I was in Kansas City. Okay. Yeah, I was during OTAs, and it was just you know I, I was rolling. It happens. It, it happened. It's part of the job, but yep. um, but yeah. So I'm I'm going through rehab, and it actually allows us allows me to do this with my mom, which yeah. is great. Just We've had awesome. this idea it's for really you know a while now. Yeah. And now that I have some idle time where I can't really do that, so you're going to go back. You may not go back. You're going to see what happens. Yeah, no, I, 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 I totally want to, and uh, I'm, I'm, I've since been released from the Chiefs, but other teams have been showing some interest. So. Can you say who? Uh, or not? I'm not really at trouble. liberty. I'm not. Okay, I love that. I'm not at liberty to say, but I love that. <laughs> so as as you do this mother uh, son team, how do you launch this fall, and, and what what's first? Well, we're 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 developing the program right now and, and engaging other people in, in the content of it, and it'll roll out in August. And so, what we'd like people to do, if if they're interested in it, they could reach out to me. All my correspondence information is on my website, and that's uh, what's the website? It's Kathleen Linta Coaching, Kathleen with a K, Linta L I N T A Coaching dot com, and I have all my information. There's actually a form where people can fill out if they'd like to get on our list for when we do launch it. They can be first in line. Which would be wonderful, and we're going to hopefully do some live events around here as well as online first. So that'll be fun, and then we'd love to do keynotes. I mean, that would just be a blast to go and and you know meet with groups of people and tell our story and you know answer questions and just have a good time and well, educate people. Enjoy the ride, because being with mom for a little bit and son, <laughs> how lucky is that? It's great. That's we're so lucky. terrific. Yeah, we're so lucky. Thank you so much, and it's athlete ascension, learn, execute, ascend. Thank you both for being on. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, Ann. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks. I made a trivial pursuit, spent one listen. Who is this girl? I spent all night kissing, and a bump is right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetracked to find my solution. I found the keys to the door, but it's also a metaphor. Need to keep on to the grocery store, but mine, just the same time. I skip right ahead to the last ride.